Mm, naturally, there's there's nothing in life that we don't have to pay for in one way or another. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so uh, you know, the payment <laughs> payment is something which is some kind of eternal existence you know you 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 live the life that you pay for we all do right um so but but it's interesting because people can go and do these activities the breathing the meditation the relaxation the the, the mindset the personal development the, the the coaching the whatever and then they they go back out into the normal world uh -huh. and i i wonder how useful it is when you have to return to the craziness you know how, how useful it is it is to find your yourself and find your center when when you go back out and it's just like for, for i think for most people the, the world is a kind of crazy place where it, the, the, there's a lot of insanity madness and a complete lack of logic most of the time um yeah it's, <laughs> Don't, 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 well, look for logic, but don't waste don't time. Expect. Yeah, yeah, don't waste time <laughs> waiting for it. Because the, the once you begin to, uh, once you begin to analyze things a little bit, and if you can do it in a very, uh, I would say, I don't know, accurate, fast, uh, kind of semi-intelligent, way um it, it's very easy to recognize that there's really not much logic anywhere just go around um go to any supermarket and look at a person's shopping basket or their shopping trolley right it, it, you will just see that most people are not making any kind of logical or sensible purchase in uh in that area and um it's part of the way we are as people, I think. That uh, logic is a constant. Um, it's a constant mountain that we have to climb. Because mm. it, it it's it, it's a challenge on a on a daily basis because we 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 meet so many things that don't make any sense. But but that's okay because that's life and everybody has to live in their own way. People tend to have problems or make mistakes when everything goes really quickly around about them and uh um it's very easy to get lost when that happens as well so when we can when we can slow things down um you know there's there's something that that, that athletes talk about when they're when they're 100 percent engaged in their activity or their their sport um they talk about the fact that time appears to slow down like uh, the the tennis the tennis player who is reacting very quickly to playing a stroke or a shot um the, it, it happens when you're watching it as a spectator it happens like this but when you're the actual player you're able to make adjustments and make movements you still react um well what's the word it's uh it's an impulse, yeah. Uh, it's an instinct, the way that you react. But you you still have some control within that. Um, if people talk about it when they have uh, when they have car accidents, that when somebody has a car accident, they the time appears to slow down and almost stop because they can see everything happening in the smallest, most minute detail, and um, you know, this is a this is a connection in the moment, and if we can create those moments for ourselves where time, for at least for us, appears to slow down, or I'm sure you've had experiences with friends where you've lost track of time. Like you spend time with friends, and it's like oh, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. Oh my gosh, yeah. And and it, you know that that's an example of connecting with with people where where. Um, Time for us appears to slow down, but you know, for the rest of the world, it just keeps on going, and um, we we lose track of time. So, um, yeah, it's really good to be aware of that. Um, it's good good to be aware of the the simple things, the foundational things, 
if you can't get mm. your breathing right. If you can't find a quiet space, it's basically like being dragged behind a car. Okay, you you, uh, <laughs> you you there's there's no escape. You're you're tied to to everything happening around about you. Um, one of them. Um, so a lot of people produce podcasts and other internet online information, myself included, and a lot of people who produce them have big problems finding a quiet space to record their podcast. And a lot of them end up doing it in their cupboard. Not joking. A lot of people, they, they, cause it's the only place that's quiet. So they go into their cupboard or their closet and they close the door Ooh. and they've got this little space that's relatively quiet. And, um, I've, I've listened to some of the top podcasters in the world and they said that, you know, when they began that they, they, that's where they went. They, they, they recorded their podcast there because they discovered that the world about around them was so crazy that um, recording the podcast was the only time that they could find a little bit of space. And then they realized they didn't really have any space to themselves because even when you go to a class to do your meditation or breathing work or, or whatever, you're still surrounded by other people and very often that affects our behavior. Uh, we, we don't realize it very much, but when we're in a when we're in a group, we tend to behave slightly differently from when we're on our own. When we're on our own, a lot of things, you know, you know, like if you're on your own at home, you can you can walk naked around your flat, and you know, it doesn't really matter, right? Yeah, when you're you could you could just let it hang and be free and be yourself, and and nothing else matters. Um, you know, when you're with a group of people, you. You, you tend, but depending upon the group, right? You, you, you probably can't do that, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And if you could do it, it might be a sign that there's something wrong, anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, uh, yeah. It, it just reminds me of a conversation I had with a client years ago about. Um, the, cl <laughs> the client was asking me what was wrong about starring in a porn film. I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but it's just on my mind. And um, because we were talking about walking around the house, maybe when we yeah, are yeah. on our own, and yeah, when just, we are in, in, in yeah, a group it, of other people, and what is normal and what is not, and everybody has a um, different perspective on, on yeah, what, yeah. What, what, what is normal and, and and what is okay. Yeah, and uh, so my my. It was a client I had at the time, and they were they were asking me like, "Well, what is what is wrong with 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 doing this?" And I'm like, "Well, if you think it's okay, like there's a whole there's a whole then then you're surrounded by people who believe it's all okay, and then you're and in that community it's all okay, but that community is a tiny little part of the world." and maybe a tiny little part of your life. And it, it, it's, um, it, it's amazing how much in life we conform to the community because we want to belong, but that's not really us. Uh, yeah, well, the truth is at the end of the day that the only judgment that matters is our own judgment. And uh, we have judgment usually because we have a lack of patience. Um, where we're not prepared to wait for for things to happen, and and this uh, th this idea that other people's judgment matters is part of the way that we conform to community. It's also part of the way that we're brought up, where we we search for affirmations in our behavior from our parents, and at school is the same thing. We're looking for uh, people to acknowledge that we're good at something and we want those little gold stars on everything. And, um, mm -hmm. and, uh, so, so we sort of learn that, uh, this, when, when, when we're, we learn that we learn the wrong thing, which is we learn that we're, we're good when other people say that we're good, which is, uh -huh. a, we, which is a giant mistake. And that's, um, that's why recently I've been involved with some businesses and organizations that have won 
a lot of awards for different things. And I, I really question whether or not this affirmation from from colleagues and other people is 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 actually what the business needs or whether it's just self-satisfying and you know friends just mm. shaking hands with each other going oh well done and, and i'm really I, i'm not sure that um that it's uh that it's helping Co competition that benefits everybody is, is is not a bad thing and it's it's totally individual but uh um it's it, it's interesting. The argument is: Is there a better way to organize things? Um, I, I don't know. It's nice to have some recommendation or not recommendation, uh, recognition of of what is good. It's nice to have a way to recognize things that are good and things that are great. Um, you know, the reason why we have the top ten songs is you know to to recognize that somebody's done something well. Um, the, the the trouble is it's very rarely organic you know how they um like when um have you ever been in a bookshop and um probably you have and it it it's got it's probably got a table that says like best sellers yeah mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. or or here here's the crazy thing new best sellers and like mm -hmm. the, the book is brand new and it's a best seller Already, I was just in a print yesterday or a week ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean that that's impossible. That that that's it's completely impossible that um, that something can be a. You, you could say well, it's 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 pre-orders, but that's still not the same thing. That's just aggregating a lot of sales over a long period of time and condensing it into into a short space of time. So. Um, this idea that something can be new and, and be a bestseller is, is ridiculous. And uh, also when you get into book publishing, you begin to understand that very few, if any, books ever make any money at all. It's a very small percent. It's like less than 1%. Less than 1% of books actually make money. When you get when you get into business and you you... You, what we say, we you crunch the numbers. You look at the number. You add everything up. You're like, okay, okay, this is what comes in, and this is what goes out, and you you add up everything, and then you you, you look at it. You very quickly realize that a lot of businesses are not real businesses. That that the money that they're spending is much higher than the income that they're getting and that's that's true for a massive number of businesses almost 99 percent of businesses um, they they survive through uh, one or two products that they produce and uh, it's the same with writers and, and authors as well very few writers actually sell enough books to make money if if you look at if you look at the cost of production of just look at the cost of a production of a book and then work out how many copies of the book you have to sell, and then aggregate. And if if you're doing it individually, it's difficult enough. But then if you if you've got a, a, a bookstores and you have to pay for the rent of the space of the bookstore and you have to pay for your employees and you have to pay for every tiny 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 little thing. Um, like I was talking to someone in the hotel business a few weeks ago, and they're like, for every for every hundred pounds that a person spends on a hotel room, one pound or less than one pound goes to the hotel, right? The rest is only expenses and taxes. Yeah, so 99% of the money is costs, um, yeah. and this is this is true for 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 so many businesses, and uh, it's becoming harder and harder. I was I have a local newspaper here and um, I was looking through the newspaper to get information oh, about it. oh. it's called it's called the Northern Scot Northern Scot now oh and interestingly interestingly I didn't think about the, the cover story but the cover story is an example of what I'm talking about where where um, look it says Elgin Museum Cash award. award a massive boost. You see, the museum 
can't make money as a profitable business, so it has to get cash donations from right. people in order to survive. And the whole newspaper is about organizations giving money to business. The whole newspaper is about organizations giving money to businesses in different ways, either charities or grants or scholarship or funding because the businesses don't survive otherwise, which means they're not real businesses at the end of the day. Yeah. Um, schools fall into that category as well. Um, private schools, a little bit different, but they still get funding. Anybody that gets funding from somewhere, you know, they're, they're not able to survive as a business. Um, and um, what happens when you give funding is you take the incentive away from making profit and you know, government puts a lot of money in one place and everybody goes there for the money. They don't go there to make business and help people. They go there because the money is there. And I've seen this in like 99% of businesses that, uh, that, 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 that I've worked with, you know, finding businesses that make real profits is, is quite rare. Um, even things like in the medical industry, because they are working on fixed donations from governments through insurance. So, so even even businesses that appear to make large amounts of money don't. And, and the people at the, the core of it, the people at the root of it understand it. The banks understand it because you can go bank, you can have a business, you can go bankrupt and you go to court and the court just cancels everything. Who does make money? It's so abstract. Well, anything that you believe works, works, which is different from something working. Uh -huh. right? um, re religion works, but we don't have much proof that there's a God. We have belief that certain elements of logic lead us to a conclusion that there's a God, and that's fine, because that helps a lot of people. And... That, you know, we're, we're a, we are a planet that survives on people helping people, so that that's a good thing. Um, but uh, if you go to the if you go to the the, the root of of the under, understanding of the problem, then my very very first video. This is my very first. It was like in my first three videos I made like ten years ago uh, on YouTube was about how banks lend money and ask for interest back. And remember the word interesting, okay? Because it's a very important mm -hmm. word because it's the interest that makes it interesting. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. And the so. Uh, Bank, banks create the money. So let's say there's a currency called, uh, I don't know, let's say there's a currency called X. So let's say there's three companies. So the bank gives 10X to the first company, 10X to the second company, and 10X to the third company. They give out these loans. Now the bank wants its interest back. So the bank says, I'll give you 10X, but I want 12X back. And maybe that's a good deal for the company. So... Um, so each company gets 10x, but has to give 12x back over time. And w the companies um, work with the money, and they, they, they trade, and they do business between each other. And um, after a period of time, they have to give back the extra 2x. Problem is, the bank created 10x, 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 30x, and the bank expects back 12x, 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 36x. Where does the extra 6x come from? The bank only created 30x, but the bank mm -hmm. wants back 36x. What does that mean? Well, it means that one, at least one of those companies, is guaranteed to fail. Because the money that they have to pay back does not exist. And probably two of those companies are guaranteed to fail. Because the money, for one company to pay back the money, the extra money, the other companies won't have the money to pay back just because there's not enough in the system. So um, so the whole economic system is um, 
um, basically a destructive economy. There, there's, a, there's actually a financial term, creative destruction, it's called. It's a financial term where um, everything is in, essentially designed to fail, but it works because as human beings, we're very simple and we don't, we don't in that area have a lot of complex thoughts because we only see the the money in the account at the end of the month we don't really think much about where it comes from and it doesn't matter because we can't really change much about that anyway so uh so it's uh it's it, it's interesting and then the and then through this form of subtle manipulation everything gets controlled uh, people who study finance kind of kind of amuse me because I'm not sure that you can people talk about making money and I'm not sure you can actually make money I think you can you can get rewarded for your work but um, hmm, 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 I'm not sure that uh, that uh, we can actually make money in that sense anyway that's a bit it's all it's, it's all a bit abstract and um,